Hi everyone, this is the lesson that you've been asked to do independently on peer review. So you need to have your booklet open in front of you at page 64, where you'll see this page here on peer review. So we're starting with a little introduction to why we need peer review. So if we just read through what it says here, it says psychology, like any science, develops its knowledge through conducting research and sharing those findings with the rest of the scientific community. So that means, for example, um, other researchers and uh, other universities. <clears throat> in order for research findings to be shared, they need to be published, and they're published in specialist publications called academic journals. These are collections of published reports on psychological investigations. So the first thing you need to do here is this task, which is to find titles of three academic journals related to psychology, where psychological investigations reports on those investigations would be published and then you just need to list them in the bullet points so if we just go on to the internet here if I just open a new tab and google um, academic journals psychology and hopefully we will get a list here if we just go on to wikipedia list of psychology journals <coughs> Scroll down. So these are all alphabetized. So you could either just grab a few off this screenshot here, or you can do the same search yourself and get a few different ones. So I think a really easy good one to go with would be this one that I'm highlighting at the bottom here, the British Journal of Psychology. That would be a general one. And then there are journals that are related to specialist areas within psychology, such as this one, the British Journal of Social Psychology. So you could use those two and then pick a third one of your choice. OK, so now we've looked at what we mean by journals, we can now start looking at what peer review is. If you look at the bottom of page 64, in the shaded box, you'll have a definition of peer review. So you need to learn this definition in case you get asked a question on what is peer review. This would be your answer. So nice little easy phrase to start with. Peer review is a quality control process. So that means um, the purpose of it is to ensure that any reports that get published aren't just made up, they aren't just rubbish, they have actually gone through this process to check that they are valid pieces of scientific research. It involves the assessment of research reports by experts in similar fields. So these experts, these are the people who conduct the peer review, and we'll more on that in the next little bit. So that's your definition of what peer review is. Now on the next page you have a little diagram that depicts the process of what actually happens step by step when peer review is happening. So here I'd like to have a go at this sorting task where you've got to put the following statements that appear on this slide, put them next to each little icon on that diagram on page 65. So just to clarify, these are not in order. What you could do first is you could just write the letter here next to the, the picture where you think that belongs. <clears throat> so one statement here is the editor, that's the person who's responsible for deciding what goes in a journal. That person may send feedback to scientists who may revise and resubmit the report. The scientists, this would be the person who's written the report. B, scientists write a report on their investigation. C, journal editor receives the report and sends out to peer review. D, if report meets scientific standards, then it would be published. E, scientists study something. And F, peer reviewers read the report and provide feedback. So I would just pause this video here and decide whereabouts on that diagram you think each of these <clears throat> six stages are happening. If you do that yourself first, then you'll understand this a lot better. Pause the video now. Have a go at that and then continue the video and it should reveal the answers. Okay, so now you've had time to try and figure that out by yourselves. I'll now go through the step-by-step -step process of peer review and I will also show you which letters you should have put where. So you can actually write these in now on page 65. Okay, so the first stage is obviously the scientists have got to study something. So that was E to go next to this little icon at the top. A picture of the woman looking in the microscope. So that's meant to represent 
carrying out an investigation. Then the next stage is the scientists will write a report on their investigation. So B came next. Then when that report is written, the next stage would be C. The journal editor, that's this guy here, receives the report and reads it and also sends it out to peer review. Now these three people over here, these are the people carrying out the peer review. More on those in a little bit. F comes next. Peer reviewers will read the report and provide feedback. So they send that feedback back to the editor. And at that stage, depending on the nature of the feedback, one of two things will happen. If the feedback's not entirely positive, then A comes next. That's this arrow going back to the scientist. The editor might send feedback to the scientists who will then have to make some changes, revise and then ultimately resubmit the report and it goes back to peer review once more. <clears throat> or if the feedback is positive and it meets scientific standards, then the editor will agree to publish that report in his or her journal. Now there's a couple of extra things that you could do with knowing about the reviewers themselves, so I want you to write these extra comments on, pointing at these three people over on the right. So one point is that there will usually be one to three people conducting the peer review and these people will be chosen because they are experts, i.e. they also research the same field that this particular investigation is about. You can rewind this if you just missed that, so write that on and also note on that Academic researchers are required to carry out peer reviews as part of their job. They would be anonymous, so you don't get to find out who's reviewed your work, and it is unpaid, it is just part of the job of being an academic researcher. Okay, so the next section, now you know what peer review is, is the purpose of peer review. And there have been exam questions on this in the past, so you need to be able to articulate in an exam answer what the reasons behind it are. So all that information is described here on page 66. The main aim of peer review is to ensure that any research conducted and published is of high quality, valid, accurate and relevant. It's in the interests of science that researchers' work is scrutinised and that any work that is flawed or fraudulent, that means made up or involves any cheating, is detected. Other purposes include allocation of funding. Research is paid for by the government and by charities and these have a duty to spend their money wisely. So reviews are needed to decide which research is worthwhile and should be funded. And another purpose is to assess the research rating of university departments, because all university science departments are expected to conduct research, and the research is assessed in terms of quality by the REF, the Research Excellence Framework. Future funding for that department depends on receiving good ratings from the REF, based on peer review. So if peer reviews have been generally good, that would lead to a good REF rating. There's a little task for you to do now at the bottom of page 66, and this is to search for the REF 2014 research ratings for psychology and to find out which five universities got the best research ratings in that year. So if I just pull up the internet again and open up a new tab and search for... REF 2014 Psychology Ratings. Okay, and go on the top link here. Psychology, Psychiatry and Neuroscience are all related fields, so they're lumped together. So this is showing you what ratings have been given to departments that involve those fields. And the higher the number of four-star ratings, the better that department's research. So what you need to do is scroll down when you do this yourself and find the five highest research ratings. So if you just look at this screenshot here of the ones that are shown, the highest rating there, 75, is no surprises, University of Cambridge. So you need to find the top five scorers looking at this, um, this final row here, on the uh, final column here on the right, which have the top five ratings. That's just showing you that their research generally receives very good peer review feedback and that's why they've got really good ratings. I'm just going to now summarise that information that was on page 66 because this is quite hard to remember. So these are the key points you need to cover if you're asked what is the purpose of peer review. 
So one is to ensure high quality, valid, accurate and relevant research gets published and nothing else. Another is to prevent flawed or fraudulent research from being published. Another is to help allocate funding appropriately. And finally, to assess the research rating that universities need to get. If you look on this slide at the words that I've highlighted, I'm going to give you a little mnemonic now to help you remember all of those words, or as many of them as possible. So if you look at the first letter of each word that I've highlighted there, I've turned that into a sentence, a little mnemonic for you, and this is on this next slide. That's me. So if you remember this sentence, very anxious researchers fear flack for rubbish reviews. So each of these initials stands for one of the words you should incorporate into the purpose of peer review. So you've got valid, accurate, relevant, flawed, fraudulent, funding, etc. So if you try and remember that, then hopefully you'll be able to answer that question. So now you're in a position to do a little bit of exam practice. If you turn to the last page in your booklet with the two questions on peer review, the first question is this one, question 18. Outline what is meant by the term peer review in psychological research. So this is what I went through at the start when I explained the definition of peer review and you need to try and put two sentences in there. So if you pause the video here and write your own answer to the question and then continue and you'll get a bit of feedback. <laughs> 